So don't lose your bold, courageous faith. For you're destined for a great reward. You need the strength of endurance to reveal the poetry of God's will. Woo! Wow. Think about that. And, I, you know, again, I could just tie it into my own story. It was poetry to watch my mother walk through a crisis when I was still outside the kingdom and, and saying, what is so different about her? And we were both grieving this horrible murder that happened in our family and our our lives were so disrupted and flipped upside down. And, you know, you've heard that expression, the rug was pulled out from under me. That's a real graphic description of how it is emotionally. The whole rug of your life just gets yanked out from under you and you have no idea how you're even going to stand up again emotionally because it's such a trauma. And yet, like, there was poetry in the... Was it that she wasn't grieving? She had another source of strength that I didn't have that would be very hard to put into words. Poetry of God's will. And then receive the promise in full when we get there. And, you know, we would all like to hear the Lord say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And none of us get a perfect A-plus score on every test, right? He doesn't judge by that. He judges by how hard we're trying. How important is it to you? Well, you know, he's not an Indian giver. I'm not going to lose my salvation. Boy, if that's your stance, come up to the altar and get prayer. Because that should not be your goal, just to make the cut to get into heaven. And I won't lose my salvation. What a miserable way to live your life. We're trying to be more like Christ every day. How would he do it? Mm. For soon and very soon, the one who's appearing will come without delay. And he also says in Habakkuk chapter 2, 3, 4, this is right in the book of Hebrews, my righteous ones will live from my faith. Isn't that awesome? Any righteous ones sitting here? Sounds like a trick question, right? Tim shot the hand right up. Uh-oh, he's trying to trap us. <laughs> there is none righteous, no, no. <laughs> you get know, all this flooding of verses coming in. But he's referring to people who live by faith, right? And this is a very famous verse in the Reformation. The just shall live by works. Oh, right, you caught me. Bummer, wrong translation. The just shall live by faith. Whew, not giving indulgences. That's what Martin Luther was living with, right? My righteous ones will live from my faith. But if fear holds them back, my soul is not content with them. Easy verse to miss, isn't it? Can't we just stay on the just shall live by faith? Well, no, because Habakkuk said, be careful. You can't let fear come in, and fear's been rampant in America. And it's, right, like, again, it's not meant to shame anybody, but it's not a good symptom if I'm operating in a lot of fear. I should, I should be getting prayer for that. Uh, you, know, you don't make good decisions when you're operating out of fear. You're emotionally hijacked, and the peace of God passes all understanding. And we, we can hear the Lord better, and you might have heard me quote John Paul Jackson. He said, peace is the potting soil of revelation. So if you want to hear from the Lord, your spirit has to be at peace, not emotionally hijacked, right? We are certainly not those who are held back by fear and perish. In Jesus' name, that's true for all of us, right? We are among those who have faith and experience true life. That's the voice version, Hebrews chapter 10, right in the 30s there, if you want to go back and look at it. And then he quotes Habakkuk. Uh, so I'm just going to give you a famous verse from Habakkuk. It says, though the fig tree should not blossom, nor the fruit be on the vines, the produce of the olive fail, and the fields yield no food, the flock be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. <laughs> I will take joy in the God of my salvation. Some of you need to read that verse. It gives you strength. It's part of that immune system. How can we as the church be a strong immune system for the culture if we don't have a, a strong immune, spiritual immune system in our own lives? Well, one way is we do it together. And what's lacking in me, you fill the gap. I'm telling you, we need each other. This is not a, a Lone Ranger kind of operation. Whew, they punish people putting them in isolation. Humans are obsessed with power and political prominence as a means to influence the culture. Christian citizens have an obligation, according to the Word of God, 
to strive for justice and freedom through the transforming power of the Spirit in people's lives. Meditate on that for a minute, right? The Lord is saying, you don't just keep this for yourself. You be a witness for me. A witness means that, that you're living an example in the way you're living your life that shows that there's something different about you. We have an obligation, this author says, to strive for justice and freedom through the transforming power of the Spirit in people's lives. Rather than this temporal power, the real work of the kingdom often thrives under fierce attack and opposition. That's the commentary from John 16. In this world you will have trouble, but fear not, for I have overcome the world. See, that's what Jesus is saying to his disciples. This is not an observational sport. It's a participation sport. You are here to advance God's kingdom, not just make the cut when you die and get into heaven. That's too lukewarm. We don't even want to look at that verse. Can you hang in a little longer? Nick, could you lay hands on some other people? I'm not going to keep you long. So. I'm going to give Nate a room in my house. It's going to be called the Barnabas room of encouragement. <laughs> so I'm just going to stay here in the New Testament for a little bit, and then we'll close. It says, we are treated as dying, and yet we live. Who's talking? 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Yeah, that's Paul, right? And look, you know, I mean, he, he persecuted a lot of Christians before he got converted on the road to Damascus. His life was completely turned around. And God said to the, to the man he sent to pray for him, a man named Ananias, you need to go and talk to him and tell him that he's my chosen vessel and I have to show him all the things he's going to suffer in my name. <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> I don't want to suffer. What are you talking about? Well, look, you know, if, somebody, my, if my mom wasn't willing to suffer the persecution I gave her before I said yes to the Lord, she could have taken the easy way out and said, well, you know, too bad. I got mine. No, but she loved me, and I was not living a good life. So here he goes. He's going to just give us a list. He said, we're treated as dying, and yet we live, as punished, and yet we're not executed. Though we're sorrowful, we continually rejoice. As the poorest of the poor, we bring richness to all. And though we have nothing, we possess all things. <laughs> what was he talking about? When you got the Spirit of God in you and you know the Word, and he definitely knew the Word, yeah, right? Like, that's one thing we know about Paul. From being a Jew, he was studying under the best, he went to Harvard effectively, and like he knew the Word, and then God gave him a download of what it means in the New Covenant. And it's like, yeah, we may not have a lot of physical possessions, but we possess all things. And then it's similar in 2 Corinthians 11, verse 24, it says, Five times I've withstood the 39 lashes. It would be really easy for us to pass by that one, but I'm not, because I just saw a, a, an outtake from the movie uh, The Passion of the Christ with the actor Jim Caviezel, who played Christ. And in the scene when he was being whipped, the way they do it in the movie, they put a board on your back so that you're not getting whipped. That would have, it'd be a problem with the actor's union on that one, huh? But they did the whip, and they hadn't put the board in. So he felt one of those 39. And he, you know, obviously that was something he'll never forget. And here's what he didn't know. It's not just the pain on your back. It's that it pushes all the air out of your lungs. When that whip hits your back, <laughs> there goes all the oxygen. And guess what? <sighs> Doing that ain't so easy because your back's killing you. So you want to breathe, and just when you start to breathe a little bit in, here comes the next one. <laughs> Whatever little bit you had in there, that's gone. So it's not just the pain. It's showing you what it's like to die of suffocation because you can't breathe. Before they put you on the cross, where you do die of suffocation because you can't breathe. You know that one. That's, that's some other day's topic, but... Five times he took 39 lashes and wouldn't renounce his faith. 
So what we don't defend, we will soon abandon. That's happening in the culture today. Sorry, it's happening. We got to be honest. Church isn't always willing to defend what the Bible says. 